Each of us knows how important winning championships, cups and progressing in Europe is. We all feel the same. We carry the can and do our bit on the park, but we can't do it without your help. Every penny you spend in the Rangers shops or with Rangers Direct is reinvested in the team to help bring more top players to the club. The more of us there are, the better our chances of success. If you buy Rangers goods from anywhere else, there is no benefit to the club. Buy direct and support the club. We'll reinvest the profits in top players. Other retailers won't. You can help us win, but you must buy direct. Hello and welcome to Ibert Stadium. For another peek behind the scenes at Rangers Football Club, we're going to be showing you goals, gas, and plenty of outtakes. Looks magnificent, doesn't it? Even when it's empty. But I'm sure you're like me, you prefer it with 50,000 Rangers fans shouting their heads off in a European night. Remember the great nights we've had? Great players like Caitley, McCoy, Durant, great performances, and uh, the great Davy Cooper. I miss him. Looks as though there was no way through there, but he found a way through magnificently, Cooper. Fraser now plays it in early. And it's another goal this time by McCoyst. I'm every bit as good as David Cooper. Why? <laughs> nay boy, nay opponents. I'm as good as David Cooper was. He was special, wasn't he? That was a bit of magic he saw. And of course, the other side of the park that night there was a guy called Ted McMinn, who on occasions could be just as magical as David Cooper. And he'd be added back Ted McMinn, because not only did the opponents not know what he was going to do, Ted didn't know what he was going to do. And to be fair to the boy, he knew his sort of shortcomings, as you'll see in this interview. Well, what about this fellow alongside you? I mean, <laughs> such an amazing... Yeah, and the crowd yeah. love him. Well, that's a good thing now, but we can get them in both flanks, and Ted's he's doing some tremendous runs, you know. They, they just don't know how to, how to take him at all. What about that? Well, uh, it's something different, that's about it. Uh, Davey does all the nice, we neat skill, skills, and then when it comes to me, well, just run with the ball and just when it ends up, it ends up. Sometimes in the Colton Road, sometimes it's in the night. <laughs> <laughs> and one moment when you completely missed it all together out there, uh, That was a rehearsed that this morning. But, uh, <laughs> I'd, uh, my, my legs still up in the Colton Road. <laughs> but it's just something different. As you probably noticed, these goals are out of position. What they do is they take them out, give them a wee rest, because the Rangers forwards batter them every Saturday. You know? <laughs> do you remember 1990 we played Valletta from Malta? We were so far ahead and then we got a penalty. Chris Woods decided to come up from the other end and take the penalty. Well, that goal could have been at the back of the Copeland stand. It wouldn't have made any difference. He still wouldn't have had it. I think justice was done, by the way. A rare chance, maybe a unique chance. The thing is, Martin, if you've seen Chris Woods in five or side games, he really does fancy himself as a goal scorer. Never plays in goal. He's always up front knocking goals in. This is a test for him. Well, it's a collector's item, this. Chris Woods for Rangers. Missed it! And that will take some living down. Every part of this pitch is sacred. Let's get up. Bit where you remember something happened, a McCoy's goal, a uh, Nandy Gorham save or something. This part is a special memory for me. Do you remember we played Bruges in the Champions League? We were down to ten men, Mark Hately had been ordered off, and Big Nizzy got the ball out here, and he crossed it into the goal mouth, and it bounced, 
and the goalie decided to dive towards Govan Cross, but the boy decided it was going to Paisley Road Toll. <laughs> Two one for Rangers, it was magic. I'm just keeping this right, you know. I love Big Nizzy. Stephen. Well done, Trevor Stephen. What a shame he hit that straight into the back of McCall. But Nisbet whips it in. Oh, my word! It's a goal by Nisbet. It's the break and the stroke of luck that Rangers needed. It might be the biggest fluke in Europe this season, but who cares? Rangers are back in front. Throughout the history of Rangers Football Club, these cabinets have been full of trophies. Walter Smith put 13 on them. Great record in a spell that he had here at Ibrox. He's now moved on and we've got a new manager, Dick Advocat. First European game this season, we played Shelburne at Tranmere. 5-3 we won, but we were three down at one stage. So we come to Ibrox to play the second leg. How would we do? Go. No, it's no dopey for the Seven Dwarfs, although he has got something to do with the next clip. I love doing pantomimes, I really enjoy myself in them, except for one thing, a Saturday, I can't get to see the games. Two years ago, 1997, 3rd of January, Rangers playing Celtic here. Big George Albert steps up to take a free kick. I'm watching it in my dressing room in Motherwell. I'm trying to get into a baggy pair of trousers. My dresser's looking at it and she says, he'll never score for there. <laughs> oh, famous last word, right into the back of the pokey. I've finished up my Archie line in the dressing room flare. I don't know whether to laugh or greet. I'm trying to get these trousers on so I can get back onto stage in time. Oh, I can remember it as if it was yesterday. It was marvellous. What a goal. You never get fed up looking at it, do you? Celtic's war is high, strong. But Albert gets it through! The hammer has torn Celtic apart. Well, you won't see many free kicks hit any harder than that. That was awesome. Absolutely awesome. This is goalkeeper side. This is Stuart Kerr's side, but it's hit with such pace and ferocity. Goalkeeper doesn't edge to the right very far, does he, if at all? But that ball is past him before he can move. Look at the goalkeeper's position. He sees it. It's on its way. Go and move. It's past him before he can move two yards. Remember, remember the 14th of November, 1996. It wasn't here at the stadium, it was the other side of the city, at Celtic Park. The game's 11 minutes old. Brian O'Neill slipped, in steps, Brian Loudrop takes advantage, bang, in the pokey, we're in easy street, one nothing up. Is that apart from the good play, he'll want a goal. There's a slip by O'Neill, and Loudrop's away, and Rangers look for a goal and get one! In the eighth minute from Brian Loudrop. A lot of drama in old firm games. It hadn't started yet. Later on, we got a penalty. Up steps Paul Gascoigne. 20 minutes to go. Gascoigne steps up. And Kerr has saved a Paul Gascoigne penalty in his first old firm game. OK, enough drama. No, Van Voss is still to come onto the scene. He's got a chance. He's got to score. And we've given it straight to Van Bossen. Gascoigne. Van Bossen. And uh, allowed to go on is Albert. He's got Van Bossen with him. Oh, my goodness! Well, what an extraordinary sequence. Well, we'll give him another chance. Go on, 
Dennis Alberts. He's got Van Bossen with him. Oh, my goodness. Surely he'll score less time. He's got Van Bossen with him. Oh, my goodness. No, I actually know the inside story of that. He was outside the park. Before he came in, a guy said to him, could you get me a ball for charity? And just as he's about to take the shot, he sees the guy at the back of the stand, thinks to himself, we've got this game won, I'll just give him the ball just now. <laughs> Aye, that'll be right. But the drama's still not finished. Celtic got a penalty. Pierre Van Hooydonk versus the goalie. Who came out and top? It's Pierre Van Hooydonk to keep his nerve for Celtic and keep them top of the table. And Gorham has matched Kerr's achievement. Extraordinary. Yeah, I think he enjoyed it, didn't he? But the drama's still not finished. A fox comes on in the park. What is it, a fox? I think it is, Martin. Ten out of ten for nature observation, Mr Tyler. Oh, see, old film games for drama. What more could you ask for? We didn't need any more. We had the three points in the bag. It was brilliant. The magnificent blue room at Ibrox is just in a new facelift. Looks absolutely super. It's very quiet and peaceful in here. That's why they use it for interviews with some of the players. Now, the nine in the row squad put a ball in front of their feet and a crowd at their back. They were marvellous. Put a camera on their face and a microphone under their nose. <laughs> Different story. Maybe four, uh, four or five. <laughs> but uh, they came off for us and then we got a good result on uh, the night. And for our viewers in Gaelic, Ian Durant. Came a long way, but we're ready. Yeah. Hi, this is Rangers Television. Stay close by and watch in as you will. I don't think I don't think oh, this is that great. Charles Heston. He was on This Is Your Life last night, wasn't he? Can I go anytime? Uh, Hi, this is Rangers TV. Stay close by and you will reveal the latest up-to-date news on Rangers team selections for today. So what did I say there? Oh, you will reveal. I will reveal. Take three. Is that us? Yeah. Ah, where are they? If they stick close, how long do they need to wait to see this? Hi, this is Rangers Television. If you stay close by, I will reveal Rangers up to the date. <laughs> I can't do this. This is the, this isn't me, is it? Right, here we go. I've done this bit on the telly before, you know. But they gave me cue cards and they gave me things to read, you know. And that was that was easier for a punter like myself, you know. You know, no, I don't want him, lad. It's just... <laughs> Hi, probably. Um, hi, welcome to Rangers TV. How's that go? This is Rangers Television. Stay close by for my exclusive team news. Uh, that's it, isn't it? Hi, this is Rangers Television. Please stay close by for my exclusive team news. How's that? When players are interviewed, it's either before a big game or after a great victory. Before a big game, they're a wee bit apprehensive, maybe nervous about how they're going to play, how the team are going to perform. But after a big game, especially if they've won, or oh, they're up for it. But it's usually the next morning, and they've done a wee bit of celebrating. In those cases, thank God for sunglasses. Aye. This is recording, by the way. Aye. We're still recording, aren't we? Aye. Carry on. Right. When you first came to the club, did you realise what nine or no many Rangers in Scotland? Well, I did, yeah. Um, especially when you've got the gaffer naughty saying, if you don't win this game, I'm going to smack you in the mouth. Because we needed nine in a row, so obviously it did mean then it did click on what nine in a row meant. Aye. <laughs> fuzzy, fuzzy, was a woman. This is going to take a bit of cutting this one, I'll tell you. Yes. <laughs> There's a, a guy who cost. We would have won a, a treble if it wasn't for him. It's finished. He's nearly finished. He's just started. <laughs> Almost flying. I'm only kidding. The other ones are done. Yeah. Squeeze that zip. <laughs> now, you're going to play Motherwell today. Is that after Hibs or do you want to play Hibs first? All right. We can lose that. Oh, I know. Yeah, right. it doesn't We've been very fortunate here today. We're filming in a player's day off. 
very quiet and peaceful around the house. But when the players are about, there's a kick-off in their sound. And trying to find a quiet spot, nearly impossible, as Walter Smith would testify. Who's that shouting? I will learn it, I know we've got to accept it. OK, Jim. I've not got to accept it. <laughs> Reasonably quiet here now, isn't it? In comparison to what it's been like all day. And the two of you will be proud to show off what you've achieved here. Yes, well. I'm... Tell me when you're ready. Right, ready. Bit of a little bit. Nothing ready. Okay. <laughs> not for a while. It's not as bad. <laughs> it's on your hand now. Right, Tom. Yep. Testing, testing. I hurt your ears, no? I hurt your ears. Big boys. Shouting in. <laughs> there you go. When I first joined Rangers, uh, and I... Aha. Uh -huh. Who is it? Um, I need a trophy. Right, let's start Sorry. again, will we? We've got the first pattern in, we? Right. When, when you... Thank you. When you... Uh, well... Oh. Sorry, I thought I was somebody trying to get into it again. Sorry, on you go. I look at the camera, eh? No, oh, just look at me. Look at I know it's worse. You know what I mean? Ah. Better doing that. Like, you know, it's better lights, eh? Okay, okay. George, are you disappointed you're not getting a game today against the old enemy Celtic? Ah, well, it was a photo of him. Tell me the lights were good. <laughs> Terrible. I know how I feel. You just you don't know what to do, there's nothing you can say. Mind you, it's no bad for the other team there. Do you remember the Battle of Britain here? We went a goal down in ten seconds and then John Lukic came into the deal. <laughs> Thank you, John. Rangers win this corner. Durant will take it. McPherson will be a threat here. Heike certainly will be a threat here. Goffs at the uh, near post as well. It's up to Lukic. Oh, and he's fisted it into his own net! The goal's been given. Completely miscued. And suddenly, out of nothing, Dorigo, watching on the line, couldn't stop it going over the line. It's clearly there, but it's clearly an own goal. Well, that's an incredible thing. It's, it's really a, a bread and butter cross for Big Luke. It's, he's come out to claim it, to punch it clear. No question about it, whether it was in or not. One each. And we're going for it, we're going for a victory. And up we pops the Super Alley. It was a wee bit scrambly, but it counted. And it's 2 1 for Rangers. Stephen with the corner again. And McQuist! Rangers get the lead. Lukic had saved the first header from the corner. Could only calm it down. The person with a good header carried there by the goalkeeper, but McCoyst finishing it off. And one of the Rangers players down injured. It's McPherson, I think, Brown. But if you look here, they've only really got one player in the box when they take the corner. They've only got McCoyst in there. Away ties in Europe are always difficult. None more so than this year when we went to Greece and played Salonica. It was a hard fought 0 0 draw. Then they come back to Ibrox. And two of our new players, Kinchelskis and Rod Wallace, saw us through. Wallace, a little bit slow, he turns well in that, there's a chip for Wallace, a cross ball, it must be! Great goal by Kinchelskis! The deadlock is broken by the Russian. That's a glorious play by Wallace. And the pressure at last has paid off. Good play by Albert, looks to be up for it. Wallace. Oh, my 
years ago, a wee boy came through from Edinburgh and climbed this marble staircase to sign for the Rangers. He became a legend. His name's John Gregg, MBE. He was one of the greatest players the club has ever had. He was a member of three treble winning teams and captain two of them. He was the captain of the greatest date in the history when they won the Cup Winners' Cup in Barcelona. He left the club after a wee spell as a manager and then he came back as the PR man. He's now a valuable part of Dick Advocate's backroom staff and he's faced the greatest players in the world and found it no problem. But see, trying to get some of these players together for the team picture, it was a nightmare. say that because of the influx of the new players it's been a pleasure to do the team picture this year. Battle of Britain part two. I'm raging. I can't get to Leeds. I'm in Edinburgh. I finished work at half past five. Straight through to the house. Get a wee bite to eat. Up the stairs. A shower. Down the stairs. The house coat and the slippers. And one other part of my apparel. A Rangers tie. That's the kind of things we do, isn't it? Or we'll know when if I don't wear my Rangers tie. And I'm sitting there with my two sons, my wife, in total indifference on the couch. And the game starts. Big Hately bangs it right into the rigging. I think they proved themselves.
Golden Book won by Super Ali, Alistair McCoist, MBE. <laughs> he won two, you know. He's the greatest striker ever to play the game of football. Yes, he told me. Hey, here you go. It's just to slag him, yeah? Uh, right, <laughs> That's why I'm on better subjects. His feet stink. You talk something, Pash. Probably Coyster, getting on honestly, man. Hey. Getting close to Pelters is another. See hey. if Bobby's mate. You want a heckler? <laughs> <laughs> you started, you? Aye, getting on Pelters. You think this is a sunbed session, don't you? <laughs> you think you need one by the colour, yeah. you? Break out a mass of freckles. What's up? You next. Whenever. I'm going for something to eat, right? Oh, I'll go for something to eat, right? I'll talk about Coyster later on, right now, because I'll you. to be golden bollocks once again. <laughs> you know, overhead, overhead. I was in the main stand and I felt it shake when he came down, so uh, it just shows you how big his backside is these days. I just wanted to meet Kenny the Glacier or something, but no, our rally, our rally wanted to meet the Queen. <laughs> so his mum says, the Queen. Yeah, there the man coming out, what can you get in Oh, but my Alistair, see you when he was young. He wanted to be the queen, but ah, totally challenged. Critics, you've had them over the years, Ali. Does it still hurt? <clears throat> kills me. Kills me. Absolutely kills me. I don't uh, No. European ties don't come any harder than when you play in Germany. Any Bundesliga team will give you a hard game. Rangers played Bayer Leverkusen. They were near the top of the Bundesliga. Rangers won 2 1. Great result. Giovanni van Bronckhurst and young Jonathan Johansson scored the goals. When they came to Ibrox, Jonathan Johansson proved that he's got a great future at Ibrox. Song which has got a line that says, When you can buy all the cups we have won. And the old nine in a row squad, well, they won cups for fun, didn't they? But it wasn't all fun, they didn't have a magic wand. They didn't just turn up with their boots on a Saturday. There was a lot of serious work to be done, and it was done in the training pitch. <laughs> Oh, won't you lance with me or not? Did you get the MB? Did you get it? I'm not close to MB, I'm not. I'm not bored in this one. Member of the British Empire. Can you believe I'm not bored in this one? It's my mother's sweatshirt. My, my thin, my thin sweatshirt, I've got one. Is this live? <laughs> I didn't think you got an MB. Come on, you go away out of the way just now. Leave the uh, balls, please. If you had a criminal record. Stay back. The lot, that lot must have changed for stripper. Right, Beavis and Butthead in the middle. Beavis and Butthead, come on. Come on, Beavis! Beavis and Butthead, come on. Get in there! Get in there! <laughs> 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 what is it about players when they become managers? They think they don't lose anything. They all love to take part in the training sessions, don't they? Walter Smith wasn't any different. But you get found out, Walter, watch your back, here comes Brian. Ah! Just 
Do Jasper! Ich selber. Soll ich auch mal gehen? Even under Dick Advocates New Regime, Rangers were very unlucky to get out of Europe so early this season. They put up a magnificent performance here against Parma when they drew one all. But better luck next season, I hope. This is the tunnel where the players make their way onto the pitch. Before that, they're in the dressing room and make their own preparations. Every player prepares differently. The cameras have not always been privy to that. Sometimes the coach joins in in the wee games and he's not always a good loser. Sometimes it can be dangerous to play football indoors. Well, we celebrate anyway, the fans and the players. Well, they were good at winning trophies, so they were even better at celebrating. <laughs> Foreign players at Ibrox now, and one of the first ones was Peter Schuster. And he taught us a wee bit about technique of the football, but I think we taught him a wee bit about the drinking. <laughs> 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 The last place you should try and do an interview is the winner's dressing room. It's usually chaotic, as Archie Knox found out. Actually, Archie, they were only throwing the scarves to try and cover up that haircut. It's a belter. It's been tremendous performance. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheerio, <laughs> <man up. laughs> I'll tell you what, give us a shot of that to see how ugly you guys are. By the way, yeah. one, Let me see. This is the guy that's taking it. Come on. <laughs> right, come on, eh? What about they bought racing? Even Jim White. Of course, when you win the championship, you've got to celebrate. But when you've won nine in a row, oh, then you celebrate. I always like the wee sing songs. Have a look at this one, led by the one and only Gaza. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Chick Cherry on the high road. I'm used to drama. But against Falkirk here in 1994, Peter Hooster put us all to shame. He didn't look very stop with an Oscar. In a moment of drama in the Rangers' half, of the theatrical nature, Eddie May went down and a foul was awarded, but Peter Hooster clearly thought he'd dived and he made his thoughts clear. No Oscar for Hooster, just a yellow card. 1-0 Rangers at the break. As if it's no bad enough dressing the way some of these players dress with the Versace and Armani gear. They've got to go the whole hog at Christmas and really dress up. By the way, who do you think this is? Diggin, take my face. I'll give Stuart McCall the gear back tomorrow. First thing Monday morning, Stuart McCall and get back straight back his wardrobe. Get the shoes then. Bring you, go get dressed up now, Reno. going to a fancy dress party. You've got to train together and room together in European trips, and you've also got to have days out together, like fishing trips and go-karting. Charlie Miller coming out his shell. Sorry about that. <laughs> of course, somebody's got to be the butt of the jokes when they're having a bit of fun. Some of them can take it, some of them can't. They all get their wee shot. But when it comes to taking it, Alec Cleland is a star. Alec Cleland does not need a crash helmet. It's a midget bin. Alec Cleland's crash helmet. <laughs> 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 well, I hope you enjoyed that when you look at the nine in a row squad enjoying themselves, playing hard, celebrating and making a fool of themselves sometimes. <laughs> I was laughing at those bits because I'm a real professional, I just don't make gaffes, you know. <laughs> Thanks for watching, we'll see you at Rangers End. He became a legend. His name is John Gregg, MBE. He played for the club for over 25 years. Now that's a little bit crap, didn't he? <laughs> 
There's no Ranger song that's got a line that says, when you have won all the... Oh, when you have won all the cups we can buy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. Right? There's an old Ranger song which has got a line that says... No, that hasn't got a line. There's an old Ranger song which has got a line that says, when you can buy all the cups you've oh, that's right, I've got myself mixed up now, sorry. Running. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I was, I was... <laughs> Okay, I'll give it to you. <coughs>